show some love to me. <laughs> May I give a speech? Thank you so, so much. What a joy it is to be able to, able to enjoy the presence of God, to be able to laugh and just enjoy the fellowship of each other. It's, it's such, I mean, um, church is, is a family, isn't it? And it should be a place where we can feel freedom, where we can feel joy in our heart, where, where we do not tighten ourselves with different norms, but we just feel at home, at home. And I wonder that's what the presence of God is going to do to us in eternity, even when we will be in his presence for eternity. He will give that freedom to us so that we can be his kids, like children, you know, running, making noise, laughing, being joyful, and enjoying his love. We are actually enjoying his love. Amen? Wow, I love this. I love this. I love this. May I request you to open your Bible and come to this verse, Genesis chapter 22, verse 13, please. Genesis chapter 22, verse 13, 1, 3. So we are still on the mount where Abraham is sacrificing his son, and I thought we will spend some more time on that. Uh, one of the verse, one of the part of this verse, uh, I do not know how it is called in English, what proverb would be in English, but in Hindi we call it as Gagar Sagar. So it is like in a small pot, you have the whole ocean. In few words, you tend to speak lots of things. How would that be in English? Is there any proverb for that? In few words, you, you give a big message. In a small pot, you have the whole ocean. No? It's okay. We will go with Hindi proverb. <laughs> oh, it's already there. Okay, so this is what the word says. Chapter 22, verse 13 says, Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So, Abraham went and took the ram. Now, this is the part that I want your attention to. And offered it up for a burnt offering, the last four verses, the last four verses, instead of his son. Instead of his son. These four last words, instead of his son, we know that Isaac was supposed to be sacrificed, but God provided a ram instead of his son. And these four words actually speaks of doctrine of substitution. The doctrine of substitution which is so, so vital in our Christian walk is so, so significant to understand Christianity, to understand the kingdom of God instead of his son. Instead of his son, which speaks of substitution, wherein Isaac was supposed to be killed, God has arranged something instead of that. Instead of Isaac, there's a ram, which was provided indeed by God. So God is saying, Abraham, Abraham, please do not cut this boy, but there is something that I have arranged for you. Turn around. And this has to be sacrificed. And he could get that ram, asked Isaac, it's fine, Isaac, thank you so much for your obedience, but God has provided something instead of you. And those four words are alive, are alive in eternity, instead of you. The doctrine of substitution that God has brought into, that instead of you and me, he gave his son, Jesus Christ. He gave his son, which was provided by God himself. And that is something right from the beginning to the end. It is, these this four words are for eternity. And I, I will come to that. They, these, words, these four words are for eternity. 
instead of you. I have a provision of my own son. Of my own son. So, we're going to see this in three sections today. So first we will see how uh, the New Testament confirms to this doctrine of substitution. And then we will also see the eternity of the cross. And towards the end we will see how God helps us to, to keep that fresh in our lives. So to begin with, to see how Bible, in fact New Testament, in several verses confirms the prophecy that is coming here. The prophecy, the, uh, the, the, the message that God is giving through the words of Abraham. We will see how he has accomplished that and repeated several times in New Testament. We all realize this, we all know this, that Jesus has died instead of me. Something that I was eligible for, something that I had actually earned because the wages of sin is death and my sin had fetched me nothing more than my own death. And the death that I was supposed to go through, God said, about to be killed and he says, no, not he, but my son, but Jesus, instead of him, here is the provision from my side. Here is the land that I provide. And he gave Jesus for you and for me, my dear brothers and sisters. So Jesus has taken our place and he has substituted you by Jesus when it was moment of having those wages, having that death. Jesus took over that death on himself. So I just wanted to, to read a few of the verses and I have asked a few brothers and sisters uh, to help me today. Uh, they are going to read a few verses from New Testament so that you will know what I am trying to say. So, shall we start with Nisa? Nisa, would you like to read for us uh, <laughs> Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, please? and to give his life as a ransom for many. So he, Gordon, you will have to keep the verse for me, please, because I'm gonna stay on that verse. So he has put, instead of many, Jesus as a ransom. Thank you so much. Can we see next verse, read by Andrew, John 6, verse 51, please? If you can stand for me, everyone can hear. which I will give for the life of the world. So Jesus is saying, I am the bread, I am the one who has been sent from heaven, and I am the life which has been given for the life of the world. So instead of the whole world, he has given himself. Next verse, Christian is gonna help us to read John 10, 15. I lay down my life for the sheep. Thank you so much, Christian. Uh, may I ask Sean to read John 15th chapter verse 30. John 15, 30, please. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. And Jesus has done that as a friend. Let's read Romans 5, 8. And Leon is going to help us to read Romans 5, 8, please. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm, I'm sure you are picking what these verses are trying to tell us. How Jesus has been substitute for you and for me, for the whole world. Yeah. May I request Dave, if you can please read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, 
for Christ died for our sins. If there is anyone who is not yet convinced that your sins have been taken over by Jesus, the wages of your sins that was death has been taken over by Jesus, I really sincerely pray that these verses will speak to you today, that Bible is so clearly repeating again and again to help you know that Jesus has taken your place when it was moment to receive the penalty. Jesus has taken that. Let's see what Tina has to read from Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. But we do see Jesus who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might take the death of everyone. He suffered death for everyone. For everyone, Jesus suffered death. Warner, will you please help us to, to see what is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, please. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for, for him who for their sake died in the grave. He died for all. He died for all. The substitute that was given by God. And lastly, Galatians chapter 1, verse 4. Carol is going to read for us. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, please. In order to set us free from this evil age, Christ gave, for, gave himself for our sins in obedience to the will of our Father and God. Christ God gave himself. Christ gave himself for our sins. Things. All these verses, my, my simple intention behind asking everyone to read these verses was to help you and me have that strongly settled down in the depth of our heart that my sins, our sins have been taken over by Jesus Christ. He has done for everyone. The Isaac who was on the altar represents you and me. The death that you and I deserve because of the life that we live, because of the sinful nature that we have, the death that we deserve. Isaac was literally on the altar. He was all, all about to be killed. And that's our position. That's our true position. But hey, this is the good news that I want to give to you. And this is something that I literally want to tie around your heart. Let not any deception of this world, let not any thought, let not any temptation, let not any trial ever, ever deceive you from this truth that God has provided his son in place of you. Instead of you, he has provided his son, Jesus Christ, to bear all the consequences of your and my sinful nature and sinful life. And he has sacrificed his son, Jesus, on the cross so that you and I can have life and abundant life from God. There was nothing that Isaac had done. Isaac was on the altar. There was no good thing that he had done that could have deserved had that, that safeguard at that moment. It's only the grace of God. Amen. No righteousness of mine has saved me, but it's only the grace of God that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, instead of me. Instead of you. Any time, any thought, enemy tries to convey to you that you are not worthy, you do not deserve, tell him that instead of me, my Jesus has been sent by my father so that he could die on the cross. And he died on the cross I in my place. And he has taken over all of my sin on himself. And that has been done. That has been achieved. And I am a free living boy. In his mercy. In his grace. 
The word is so clear. Again and again, the word is conveying to us, putting that deep into our heart, not only for the life that you are living now, but for eternity. Have that in you, that instead of you, Jesus has died. Instead of you, something that you and I deserve, Jesus has taken that over. Amen? The second thing that I want to bring before you, if you see the Old Testament, right from the Old Testament, when man would commit sin, he would need forgiveness. Now, God being a just God, He couldn't give that forgiveness while being just. He is the righteous God. And therefore, He arranged a system for the mankind so that He could release His mercy, so that He could release His forgiveness to the mankind. And that was something that was happening in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, God commanded them and told them about different sacrifices. So whenever anyone would commit any sin at the end of the year, they would come up with sacrifices and those sacrifices would be offered to God. And that was one of the way of releasing the forgiveness, releasing, releasing the, 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 the mercy of Father onto his children. But, but if you see with me, if you see with me, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. Let's see what Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4 says. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. Very clearly says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Is that right? For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. So, when people would be offering the sin, the, the blood of bulls and goats and different cattle to God, that would not bring any cleansing from the sins, says the word of God. Because that's what John 1.29 says. What does John 1.29 say? John 1, 29. If not the bulls and the goats, goats, then what else? 1, 29 reads. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So the blood of bulls and goats is not eligible to cleanse us from the sin. But there is only one who can cleanse us from the sin. And that is the blood of the Lamb. Lamb of God. He is the only one who can take away the sin. So when it is Old Testament, in the Old Testament, when people are coming with different offerings to the God, because they have committed sin, and we know the rule was once in a year, the high priest would take the offering in the Holy of Holiest and he would offer on behalf of himself and on behalf of the whole congregation. The question is, how is that going to save them from their sins? The interesting part is something that we read in Hebrews. If you come to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15, see this, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. And you'll stay on that verse for some time. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. A bit complicated one. It's a long sentence. Let me help you what the word is trying to say. So the in the Old Testament, 
every time anyone who has committed any sin. Because he was said through Moses by God that when you commit any sin, you are supposed to sacrifice either bull or goat or dove or whatever with respect to their, their financial condition. When they were supposed to sacrifice and when a person would obey because he knew that he is doing under the submission of the commandment. When that person would obey and sacrifice, offer the sacrifice to God for what he has committed. It's not the, it's not the, the, the offering, it was not the, the blood of bull or the blood of goat that was causing the cleansing of the sin, but it was the faith that this person had that I obey. And in that obedience, in that obedience, now this is important, in that obedience, he was, he was offering the, the, he was offering his sin onto Jesus. He was offering that sin onto Jesus. And the blood of Jesus, which was shed on the cross, would cleanse them. So it was the faith factor that was helping this person getting cleansed. For resemblance, there was blood of bull and the blood of goat. But that blood would represent the blood of Jesus, which would be shed after a few years. It's something similar that applies to you and me. The fact is, Jesus died on the cross 2022 years before. In past, I today, when I commit a sin and when I come with the heart of repentance, I look up to that cross which was 2022 years over there. I look backwards to what Jesus did 2022 years back on the Mount of Calvary. And I, in faith, receive cleansing today. Same was the case for the people before crucifixion. Crucifixion. Before crucifixion. <laughs> when people were committing sin, Crucifixion is there. For me, I am here. Crucifixion is there. So if I commit sin, I come to the Lord, I repent, and I say, Lord, cleanse me by the blood. Because your word says that your, your blood is faithful enough to cleanse me from my sins even today. So I look up to the blood that was shed there. But for a person from Old Testament, they are looking forward. When I am looking backward, they are looking forward. And every time they are offering, they are reminded, in faith, they are reminded that, hey, you are offering the same way the blood that God is going to ask Jesus to offer. So that blood would always remind them, the blood would always lead them towards the A-type, anti-type sacrifice that Jesus is going to give. So they were looking forward and we are looking backward. For the incident that Jesus did 2022 years before. See? One of the most important parts over here is faith of a believer. Faith of a believer enables you to come out of the time frame and look at the things in eternity. Your faith will help you to come out of time frame because these people in Old Testament, they would do that in faith. They would sacrifice in faith. There were two elements that were working, faith and obedience. They would do that in obedience and they would do that in faith because they were told to do so and they are doing it. And they are believing that by doing so, my sins are getting cleansed. My sins are being forgiven. When we do that, this principle applies even today. 
not only for the fact of being cleansed by the blood of Jesus, but in every thing, wherever faith and obedience comes, it will lift you above the time frame and the spiritual realm where there is no time frame. Where there is no time frame. So obedience and faith are very significant things in the kingdom of God. If you are doing something in faith and obedience, if you are taking any step, it lifts you up above the time frame. And that's what was happening for the Old Testament people. And then what happens? Jesus, he fulfills everything in the first covenant and to forgive the transgressions of the people in the first covenant. He dies, that's what is written. He dies on the cross and now he mediates for a better covenant. He mediates for a new covenant. So Jesus has completed everything that these people had committed sins, every transgression they had committed. He took over everything on him. And therefore he said, it is finished. He took every sin of theirs on himself and now mediates, introduces a new covenant. A new covenant through him. <coughs> Amen. Now in this new covenant, the good thing is, because their sins have been taken by him, there is an eternal inheritance that comes on everyone who believes before or after. Everyone who believes, the eternal inheritance comes on people before as well as after. <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting if you if you if you see <coughs> if you see with me chapter nine, twelve to fifteen, chapter nine, God and please display Hebrews chapter nine verses twelve to fifteen. I'm sure you won't need glasses for it. Although you you can keep it collectively, totally please. Because I need to show something which is there. Total 12 to 15. You had to read. No, that's fine. I will read for them. I just want to show three <laughs> words. Yeah, thank you so much. So, in these three verses, there are three words which are used with the adjective eternal. There are three words which is which uses the object or uh, adjective eternal. First is the last one, eternal redemption. Okay. Eternal spirit in the third line. Oh, that would be the fourth line. Eternal spirit, eternal redemption, eternal spirit, and last two words, eternal inheritance. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, when the word eternal comes, it does not have a limitation of time frame. That's why the word eternal. So there is eternal redemption. There is eternal spirit because he is the one through whom we, we, we get this. We, we have access to this. And then there is eternal inheritance. So when Jesus died on the cross, he provided eternal redemption through eternal spirit so that everyone who believes can have eternal inheritance. <coughs> eternal inheritance. The incidence of Jesus dying on the cross historically can be spotted on a date at a place called Calvary. True. But from spiritual, from kingdom point of view, biblical point of view, this incidence of Jesus dying on the cross is eternal. This brings eternal redemption. This brings eternal inheritance. That is the beauty of the cross. That it was available for people before and it is available people after. 
they were directed, pointed towards this incident by different sacrifices they were asked to, to offer. And in every sacrifice, he would remind them about this incident. He would keep the incidents of cross alive, fresh for the people over here. Believe me, that is a necessity. I will come to that. That is a necessity that cross should be fresh in me. Cross should be always new in me. And he would help the people in Old Testament by asking them to offer every now and then in different reasons, for different reasons. So that cross would be always fresh in their heart. And they would be always reminded of what God has provided. What is the provision of God? So they would always, whenever they would offer, that would be, that would be reminded to them that you are moving towards that. You are remembering the cross of Jesus. They were not asked to appreciate the bull or the goat who was sacrificed, but Jesus, who is getting sacrificed instead of you and me. As, as we move ahead, I'm sure that these things will become more clear. You know the most interesting part that I see? Jesus is called the Lamb of God more in the book of Revelation than anywhere in any other book of the Bible. And we know the book of Revelation speaks of the eternal things, the future things. See, the book of Revelation speaks of reveals us the future things and Jesus is referred as Lamb of God more times in the book of Revelation than any time before. Strange, hey, that the Lamb of God which speaks of cross, why do we refer Jesus as Lamb of God? We refer him Lamb of God to specify, to mention he is the one who was slain on the cross for me and that has been referred more in Revelation. So the cross of Jesus is getting reminded, is being mentioned more and more in eternity. And when eternity comes, it's not from a point to ahead. Eternity means always. I hope I'm clear with that word. Eternity is not the day I accepted Jesus and thereafter. No, it's eternity word is from nowhere to nowhere. Am uh, I uh, 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 making sense? Okay. Let's, let's, let's see. Let's see this point of verse. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12. Thank you so much. God. You are so quick today. And that's such a big help. But this man, man is capital M. That means he's speaking about Jesus. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins. Can you read the next word? What is the next word? Are you sure? This side, what is the next word? Sins? I think you are not able to see this. Okay, let's, let's read this word together. Ready? One, two, three, go. But this time, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, enough. So, this one sacrifice of sins of Jesus is for ever. Is for ever. There is no time limit for that. The crucifixion of Jesus applies for all time range. Let's see Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, please. <coughs> All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb. Slain, oh, Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Not 2022 years before. No, 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 no. This is from the foundation of the world. He has been slain from the foundation of the world. 
the word. You know what? This word just helps me to realize that my God the Father had this in his spirit that his son is going to be crucified one day and that pain was already in his spirit even when he was making Adam and Eve because that was right from the foundation of the world. He knew that his son is going to be crucified even when Adam and Eve are walking around in the garden of Eden. He had the pain in his spirit. He has been carrying that pain to the fullness of time when he saved his son and he allowed him to die. But even before that, he has been carrying that pain in his heart. You and I being human beings who cannot comprehend that. But God knew that. And he was every time asking his people, offer your sacrifices. I know they cannot heal. They cannot cleanse your sins. The bulls and gods, they cannot help you. But it knows what is going on for me. You remind me that my son is going to die and his blood is going to be shed. So that your sins, your transgressions, can be forgiven. Love of God. This is the Father that you and I serve. It's not 2022 years back when Jesus died and God shone forth his love. Oh, right from the foundation of the world, he has been showing that love to you and to me, my dear brothers and sisters. How how loving he is. How loving he is. How loving he is. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's see. 19 to 22. Maybe we may not be able to see that over there. But let me read for you. 19 to 22. <laughs> chapter 10. Let me read this for you. This is what it Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter, the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the way that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the confession of our hope. I want to bring your attention to what it says in verse 20. I'm reading from 19 once again. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us a new and a living way. In original Greek language, it says made new and living. So when the priest would go in the holy of holiest place, he would have sacrifice of a fresh, new, blameless kettle. And then he would take the offering to the holy of holiest. And this is what this verse tells us. When Jesus entered in heaven before the throne of the Father. Because the temple that we read in Old Testament is the replica of the temple that we have in heaven. It's the replica of that. So when, when Jesus is entering, over here the priests would enter into the Holy of Holiest once in a year. And they would carry the sacrifice for themselves and for everyone. And they would do that every year. They would do that every year. But when Jesus entered the temple in heaven. And he, he, he presented himself in the presence of the, in, of the throne of Father. He carries that blood. What blood is this? This is his own blood. His own blood. He carries that and he offers to the Father. He offers to the Father. And this blood is, is, is new and living. Is new and living. There is no stale in that. There is no stale. It's fresh every day. It's fresh every day. New and living. 
way that Jesus consecrated for you and for me. For you and for me. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. <coughs> See what Revelation chapter 5, verse 6 has to say. John, he is he is seeing the vision of future, right? You are with me. John is seeing the vision of the future, and this is what he sees in the future. <coughs> this is what he sees in the things that are yet to happen. And he says, "And I looked and see, behold, in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders on the right and on the left." stood a lamb as though it had been slain. So the lamb who is standing there appears as if he has been slain. It's fresh. It's new. It's living but fresh. Has had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent out all into all the earth. What I want to bring forward before you is stood a lamb as though it had been slain. When? Future. John is seeing these things in future. So even in future, the crucifixion of Jesus is live, is fresh. Because that incidence is eternal. It does not have limitation of time. That on such date, on such place, Jesus died. It applies to both the ends. Both the ends. And my dear brothers and sisters, God helped the Old Testament people by asking them to offer every now and then so that they could be reminded, it could be fresh in their heart. Now what about you and me? What about you and me? This, 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 this is what I was so shocked this morning. I was so shocked this morning because you know what? You know what? Because because let's see First Corinthians eleven twenty six. See First Corinthians eleven twenty six, please. And you will you will know why I'm saying I was so shocked. Of why I was so amazed. Why I couldn't sing this morning. Although I'm saying I knew all the songs. <laughs> But I, I was so excited, but I was so amazed. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Was not this same thing what God was speaking about? In my remembrance? That's what he was sharing. And that's, that, that amazed me. God, something that you are asking me to preach. How come you are allowing God to speak the same thing? You are just preparing the platform for me, Lord. Thank you so much. And I want to tell you, my dear brothers, when God was helping the Old Testament people to have the practice of offering offering uh, 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 sacrifices to God so that they could be reminded, they could be focused on the cross, on the crucifixion of Jesus, for you and for me, Jesus purposefully instituted the institute of communion so that every time you and I have the communion, the emblems of the, the, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, when we have these emblems, we are reminded of that same crucifixion. We are held by Jesus to be reminded of what Jesus has done on the cross because his desire is that this crucifixion should be fresh in eternity. You and I being human beings, you and I being people who are in a fallen state because of different snares, because of different circumstances in our life, there is every possibility that the crucifixion may gradually lose its grace, gradually lose its shine. The day, you remember, when you accepted Jesus as your personal savior, cross was so alive. You knew Jesus died for me. Oh, and some people must have cried and some people must have just stayed there for hours and hours and what not. The question is, where does cross stand in your 
the line, five years down the line, 15 years down the line. I hope Cross has not lost his viewpoint. Just to help you and me. For Jesus knows that. Just to help you and me, he has instituted communion. So that every time you have communion, you remember what Jesus did for you on the cross. So the people after after the crucifixion, they are helped to remember that through communion. Whereas for the people over here, sacrifices. Because God's intention is keep cross fresh and alive in your hearts. In your hearts. Because this cross brings victory over death. This cross brings joy from Him. From Him. This cross is everything that you and I need. Doctrine of substitution. The eternity of cross. And the institution of communion. One purpose, may cross be life each day for you and for me. Amen? Amen. Shall we close our eyes then? Just be thankful to God. For He remembers that we are dust. And even in that, he shows His grace, His love, in His own ways. But those ways are perfect for us. Dear neighbor, we are short of words to express our thanks to you. scriptures, Bible says, are tasted like gold through fire. And every word, <coughs> every word has life for us. We receive your word this morning. For we know, Lord, in the cross we have our healing. In the cross we have our forgiveness. In the cross, we have our deliverance. In the cross, we have our growth and prosperity. In the cross, we have our access to come in your presence boldly. So we pray, Father, that you will allow us to stay in your presence every moment. that this evening we will be having our evening service at half past six so if you can make it you are most welcome if not do let someone know so that if someone is not able to attend the morning service they can attend the evening service god bless you